Hello everyone and welcome to my talk on Seeding Vault with Terraform. My name is Kevin Holditch, Head of Platform Engineering at a company called Form3. You've got my contact details on the screen there. Before I get into my presentation, I just want to state that if you like any of the tech that you see in this presentation, we are hiring, so feel free to reach out to our recruitment team if you want to come and work for us. So to set the scene for this talk, I need to just explain a little bit about what Form3 do as a company. So Form3 are a cloud-based API that sit over payment schemes all around the world. They enable banks to connect to that API and give them access to those payment schemes. So as you can imagine in this environment where you're moving millions of pounds, security is quite paramount. So that's where the use case of Vault comes in within our platform. So I'm just gonna talk about the Form3 platform. So a Form3 platform is an entire working version of Form3. And today we have several of those environments. We have around 10 development environments, three stagings and three productions in different regions serving different customer bases. Now with each one of those platforms, we run a single Vault instance and we have a microservice architecture at Form3. So each of those microservices has different needs for Vault. So because we use Vault for secret storage, so access to resources such as third party APIs that might need a secure token or to get database credentials, each of those microservices needs an authentication mechanism to be able to authenticate with Vault and get access to that set of secrets for that microservice. Some microservices also need the ability to write back to Vault if they're communicating with a third party and need to save sensitive information. So each microservice has a different profile within Vault. So some of them just need read access to Vault and some of them need write access. But it's it's definitely not a one size fits all problem. They each need, uh, each microservices has a bespoke set of requirements. So then, so that outlines how we use Vault at Form3. So what are the problems that we're facing then? So what are the issues? Now, to configure Vault, you have to log inside a um, internal environment because the endpoint is not exposed onto the internet and you have to initialize Vault. And then you come across the problem where you have to seed it with initial secrets. So when you're building a new environment, you have to get those secrets in there for your applications to use. It's kind of the chicken and egg problem. So how do you go about seeding Vault with those initial secrets? Vault is also, quite hard to keep in sync because it's a manual process to set it up. You have to log in as an administrator with a root token and run in and, and configure it for your applications to use. That's quite a manual process. So at form free scale, where, as I've just mentioned, we've got around 15 versions of our platform, you would have to manually now make that change you want to make. So if you're adding a new secret, to 15 volts across 15 environments and keep those in sync. It's using this manual process, it's close to impossible to see what's configured in Vault because it's not written down anywhere. It's just based on what someone's manually configuring when they log into the environment. It's very slow to roll changes, again, because it's a manual process. When you're at scale and you've got seven environments, to make a change to a vault, so you're adding a new secret or changing a profile that an application is going to use, you have to make that change across, say in our case, 15 environments, and that's very slow to do. It's quite a, obviously an insecure process. So at Form 3, we're dealing with large volumes of money. We don't really want people to SSH into the internal network and have high privilege access to vault in order to make changes especially as part of rollout that needs to happen sort of fairly often. So we really want to limit, limit that access. And it can be very cumbersome to add and remove microservices. So at Form3, we've got a microservice architecture. We're constantly building new products, adding new microservices. We might deprecate products, fold microservices together. So as those microservices change, we want to constantly change the configuration of Vault to match what's currently 
what we're currently running um, because it's obviously bad practice to leave active profiles for microservices you might have removed. So we took a step back and we thought, okay, so these are all the problems we're facing with trying to set Vault up. So Vault is really good because it solves the problem of uh, saving secrets in a secure way and allowing access to those. But as I've just explained, it's very hard to actually configure Vault itself. So we had a look at a tool that we're already extensively using at Form3 for our infrastructure, and that is Terraform. And we thought, well, Terraform actually solves all these problems. It allows you to define your infrastructure as code. It's super fast because you can run all of your Terraform workspaces in parallel. It gives you an automated workflow because you can use automated runners such as Terraform Enterprise or Terraform Cloud. All of your environments will be kept in sync because that's what Terraform does. It makes your source code um, into a reality by applying that to your infrastructure. It eliminates drift because again, your source code is being matched up to your environments. And now you solve the problem of being able to see what's configured in Vault. Because it's written down in code, when you've got an engineer looking at a microservice and they want to know how that microservice stores its secrets in Vault, what access it has to Vault, they can see that all written down in, in code in Terraform. But the problem then is that Vault has only got an internal API. So how do you get Terraform to talk to Vault? So the, work, the way we solved that problem was we bought Terraform Enterprise and we set Terraform Enterprise up in a secure AWS VPC, which I've labeled a company VPC on the right-hand side of this diagram. And then in each one of our Form 3 platforms, and on this diagram, I've only illustrated three, which is a development, a staging, and a prod. Each one of those has their own vault deployed. And those VPCs, which are per environment, are VPC peered back to our company VPC which is where Terraform Enterprise runs. And now we can write our Vault configuration as Terraform code using the standard Vault Terraform provider. And we can have an instance of a workspace per Form 3 platform or Form 3 environment. So in this diagram, we've got a dev workspace to configure our dev environment. We've got staging workspace to configure our staging environment. We've got prod workspace to configure our prod environment. And because it's VPC peered, we can set up a secure network route to allow Terraform access to that Vault endpoint, but no one outside of this internal network can touch Vault. So the only manual process now with this setup is a one-time process of when you launch a new platform, you have to log in and initialize Vault, which you would have to do anyway, set up a secure app role with fairly high privileged abilities, and give that app role ID and secret to the Terraform workspace and set those up as sensitive uh, write-only variables. And that way, Terraform now has access to the vault running in your platform. It can talk to it over that internal secure network, and you don't ever need to manually configure it again. So I'd like to just go over a few of the of pointers of how you can make this work really well for you if you'd like to follow this, this approach for configuring Vault. So one is for the secrets themselves, it's really great to use Terraform variables. Why these fit really well is you can set default values for a Terraform variable, which means in most of your instances of your platform, say all of your development instances, you probably don't need real secrets. So you can use default values for your variables to set dummy values on all your development environments. So now if someone's setting up a new development environment, they can apply that workspace and they don't have to set any variables because they can just use all of the dummy values. And then on staging and production, where you probably need the real secrets, you can have your company administrator come in and set those values. It also allows you to use sensitive variables in Terraform, which means they're write only and someone can't read those back again. So it's very secure to be able to set secrets and add new secrets. And as I've said there, it allows you to set different values for different platforms. So if you've got one production that needs a certain secret and another production that needs a different secret, it allows you an easy way to do that. A few points on security. 
that you need to adhere to, otherwise it's possible to leak your vault secrets um, out to your engineers or anyone that has access to Terraform. The first one to be aware of is it's really important to limit who has access to Terraform state. So it is possible, and it's a little bit dependent on how you set your Terraform code up, it is possible to leak your vault secrets into the Terraform state. One thing I'd really recommend is not giving anyone access to that Terraform state for those vault workspaces, and then it limits the ability for anyone to gain access to those secrets. It's also very important to lock down the source repository branch that those workspaces are using to the main branch of your source repository that's got your Terraform code in. The reason for that is otherwise an engineer would be able to create a branch, change the workspace in Terraform to use that branch and then output all the secrets and do malicious activities that way to extradite your secrets. So you need to lock down the source repository branch in Terraform and make sure you use a protective branch on your source repository vendor, such as GitHub. You can have a protective master branch. And then the only way to make a change to Vault is via an audited PR process that can be reviewed and no one can circumvent that. It's also very important to limit who has access to the variables. So even if you use sensitive write-only variables, that's really good because it means someone can't read those back. So if an administrator sets them, someone else can't come in and read that value. But what it does mean is someone can maliciously overwrite the value if they have access to it. So it's important to think about who has access to those variables. So what are the advantages of, of this approach? So I've pretty much been through a lot of them with when we talked about Terraform, but this now allows you to synchronize your changes with your source code across all of your environments at the same time. It eliminates the drift between your environments because no longer have you got this manual process within your pipeline for setting up environments. We've fully automated it using the power of Terraform. Your configuration is now stated in code. So engineers can have a look at how Bolt is configured and make changes. They might need to add extra secrets to, to their microservice. They might need to change what their microservice can do within Vault. So it might suddenly need write access to save a secret in flight, for example. And they can make all those changes in an audited way. And then you can have a PR process to review that into production. And then Terraform will apply that to all the environments. It's also super fast for rollout now, because once a change is merged into the main line, Terraform will apply that to all the environments at the same time versus the world we're in before where you had to manually add that change to each environment by hand. So that was really good. And that got us to an amazing place because now we are managing Vault using Terraform, but we still had one kind of small problem. And that was to be able to test our microservice and the configuration of Vault, we had to deploy it into AWS. We had to deploy it into our environment. And what's really important in, in software engineering is if you can make that testing as close to the engineer as humanly possible, because that really reduces the feedback loop, allows you to find errors faster and speeds up development time. So then what we thought is, well, can we test this Terraform configuration locally on an engineer's machine without even applying it to AWS. So that's the problem I'm going to talk you through now, how we solve that. So the first part to solving this is that part of our Terraform uh, source code repository that has the code into manage vault. We also add a Docker file in there. The Docker file is fairly simple. I put a simplistic view of it on this slide. Literally all it does is takes all the Terraform code copies it into the Docker container. And then when you start the Docker container, it runs a Terraform init and a Terraform apply. As part of our build, when we merge a change into the main line of our Vault configuration repository, we build that new container with all of those changes into a registry. And it's also possible, obviously, to make a branch build of that container. Now, each of the microservices that we have at Form 3 has a lot of end-to-end -end tests that can be run as part of a test pack. And as part of those tests, we make heavy use of Docker and Docker Compose to spin up a set of Docker containers to represent the infrastructure that microservice needs. So in this example here, I've got a microservice that needs 
Postgres, Vault, and Console. So as part of the pre-test run for those end-to-end -end tests on the engineer's machine, we would start those free Docker containers. What we'd then do is we would fire up the Terraform container that has all of the code from our Vault configuration that I've just described. We would use environment variables to point that at our Docker container Vault, rather than by default, it would use the one the real vault in AWS. And then Terraform will now apply that configuration to the vault running in Docker. And what's really great about this is we can now test all of our changes against that local vault. And you can also add more changes in here if you want, and you can use that Terraform project to manage Postgres or manage console or manage any of your infrastructure in Docker. So you could also apply this technique for that. Once that Terraform has run and configured vault, all of our end-to-end -end tests for that application will now run and the app will get to exercise its access to Vault and make sure that's all configured correctly. So your development process is now, a developer can take a branch of the Vault uh, repo, they can make their changes, they can build a new Docker container with their changes in and then they can test that locally on their machine against their application and make sure the application's got the access to Vault that it needs to do its job. If there's any errors, so their application tries to talk to a part of Vault it hasn't got access to, that will fail, and then the test will fail on their machine, rather than them having to deploy that into AWS to find that failure. It also means you can exercise some of the kind of more elaborate features of Vault, such as if your app gets uh, credentials on the fly using Vault Dynamic Secrets backed by Postgres, it's possible to set all of that up and get that working locally on your machine as well. So what are the key takeaways from this talk? So Vault is an absolutely awesome tool for managing secrets in the cloud. It allows you a unified way to store your secrets and have applications authenticate to get those secrets. But it can really become unwieldy if you try and manage Vault in a manual way, which is kind of, encouraged from the outset by the because it's a security tool and you need to seed it with these secrets and set it up. Terraform, as we already know, is a great way to manage infrastructure and keep things in sync. So by using this technique of using Terraform to manage Vault, the two things really work well together to keep all of your vaults in sync and allow you a really nice administrative flow to be able to set secrets into Vault and apply those across your estate. And lastly, it's great to be able to use Docker containers to be able to test this configuration on an engineer's machine without the need to deploy to your environment, which really speeds up that feedback loop and it makes your development cycle much faster. I'd like to thank you all for listening today. My name's Kevin Holditch. Thank you very much.